Week 30 Day 1 In days gone by The man who best described the now extinct life aboard a steamer on the Mississippi River is Mark Twain. Having actually worked aboard the river boats, his writing captures the tranquil or turbulent events of those days. In his book about life on the Mississippi, Twain recalls the idyllic times when man was not in such a great rush to get from one place to another. One chapter deals with the races conducted between the swiftest of the boats. When a race was set, the excitement would galvanize activity along the river. Politics and the weather were forgotten, and people talked with gusto only of the coming race. The two steamers stripped and got ready. Every encumbrance that might slow the passage was removed. Captains went to extremes to lighten their boats. Twain writes of one captain who scraped the paint from the gaudy figure that hung between the chimneys of his steamer. Sample sentences 1. Today, the trend is to more and more gaudy dress. 2. It is amazing how lithe football players can be, despite the encumbrance of the safety features of their uniforms. 3. The dinosaur is an extinct species. 4. City dwellers often yearn for the idyllic life in the country. 5. A dictator will use any pretext to galvanize his people into aggressive actions. Week 30 Day 2 The John J. Rowe Mark Twain's boat was so slow no other steamer would condescend to race with it. With the utmost candor, Twain comments that his boat moved at such a pathetic pace, they used to forget in what year it was they left port. Nothing would mortify Twain more than the fact that ferryboats, waiting to cross the river, would lose valuable trips. Because their passengers grew senile and died waiting for his boat, the John J. Rowe, to pass. Mark Twain wrote in a jocose manner about the races his steamer had with islands and rafts. With quiet humor he continued to malign the riverboat, but his book is replete with love for this sort of life. Sample Sentences 1. He had such disdain for us, he would not condescend to speak before our group. 2. It is most common to malign the wealthy for their avarice. 3. It is difficult to be jocose in the presence of so many doleful people. 4. When we cannot speak with candor, we utilize euphemisms. 5. Good sportsmanship requires that one not mortify a defeated adversary. Week 30 Day 3. The Riverboat Pilot. The riverboat pilot was a man considered omnipotent by all. Mark Twain once held that high position. He writes that he felt at the zenith of his life at that time. Starting out as a fledgling pilot's apprentice, he could not abjure dreams of the time he would become, the only unfettered and entirely independent human being that lived in the earth. Kings, parliaments, and newspaper editors, Twain comments, are hampered and restricted. The river pilot issued peremptory commands as absolute monarch. The captain was powerless to interfere. Even though the pilot was much younger than the captain, and the steamer seemed to be in imminent danger, the older man was helpless. The captain had to behave impeccably, for any criticism of the pilot would establish a pernicious precedent that would have undermined the pilot's limitless authority. Sample Sentences 1. Under the aegis of an adroit master, he reached the zenith of his career. 2. We would scoff at anyone calling himself omnipotent. 3. There is no precedent for voting when there is no quorum. 4. The fledgling poet lived a frugal life. 5. No one had the temerity to disobey the officer's peremptory order. Week 30 Day 4. The Double Cross. Many incidents that took place aboard his ship are retold by Twain. One has to do with a wealthy cattle man who was approached by three gamblers. The cattle farmer had let it be known that he had a great deal of money, and the gamblers were trying to wheedle him into a card game. He protested that he knew nothing about cards. His rustic appearance confirmed that fact. On the last night before landing the three gamblers got him drunk. When the first hand was dealt, a jubilant expression came over his face. The betting became furious. All of the proper decorum was put aside, and $10,000 soon lay on the table. With the last wager one of the gamblers showed a hand of four kings. His partner was to have dealt the sucker a hand of four queens. At this point the victim, the charlatan, removed the veneer of respectability, and showed a hand of four aces. One of the three professional gamblers was a clandestine confederate of the rich cattle farmer. 
They had been planning this duplicity for many weeks. Sample sentences 1. The child tried to wheedle from her mother the place where the cookies had been cached. 2. They could discern that the faith healer was a charlatan. 3. The rustic life is supposed to be a tranquil one. 4. Repress your uncouth manners and act with decorum at the party. 5. We were jubilant when our indolent cousin got a job.